it is a peptide, which makes it um, work better and have less side effects. We can just ignore that 40% nausea rate. I don't think the nausea rate was 40% when it was called PT-141. The nausea rate was 0%. Um, I guess kind of on that topic, the next thing we're going to talk about is trazodone yeah. and some of its cousins. Yeah. So nausea, about 40% across the board for bromelanotide. Yep. Pretty high. Um, so it sounds bad, but then you also think, well, 60% of people use the medication and did not have nausea. Yep. So it, it would just be expected that you would mention that in these other things. Yep. About a one in 20 chance of vomiting. So not great. Yep. Um, if only there were a way to dose it lower. Yeah, I've certainly heard Annika. <laughs> there is ways to dose it lower, of course. <laughs> um, there, there's reputable compounding pharmacies that um, make these peptides. I guess the other thing we should mention with Phylicia or bromelanotide is it is a peptide which makes it um, work better and have less side effects. We can just ignore that 40% nausea rate. I don't think the nausea rate was 40% when it was called PT-141. The nausea rate was 0%. Although I do know people who have taken melanotan 2 and vomited. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just ig ignore that and, and move on. Um, but yeah, classically, in fact, I think our friend Derek Again, with more plates, more dates. Mm. I can't remember if it was him, but uh, I remember him telling, maybe it was like a, a Reddit story or something um, where people were horny, they had erections, but they were puking. It doesn't sound like a great combo. Not really. Uh, next we have the, I guess this is things that act on the serotonin receptors. So uh, trazodone is an older drug that's, that's sort of being repurposed um, and then there is Addy or Flibanserin, which is a 5-HT1A agonist and a 5-HT2A antagonist. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes these are used concurrently with uh, an SSRI to try and offset the side effects. Uh, that approach, hit or miss, I, I think less than half of people respond to that. Um, and not greater than half of people are going to respond to just taking this pill nightly. I think even in the best study, because they did three different phase three trials before they yep. got the approval, 50% uh, was the top line compared to a placebo response of around 30%. So just in terms of like, did they improve or did they not improve? About half of women will respond at best. Mm -hmm. And again, about a 10% rate of different side effects. If you look at uh, drowsiness or fatigue or you know, nausea, all these things can kind of come along with that. Yeah. One thing that uh, both the studies on these two compounds and the previous one found is despite a very high placebo response, the placebo adverse effects were relatively low. Yeah, so that makes you think that this is in fact related to the mechanism. And we yep. know that when you are sort of, say, just messing with the serotonin system, that you can have adverse GI effects. And I think if you're using this in the real world, you can probably attenuate those. So I might start a patient at 25 mg and then go up to 50 and then go up to 100, mm -hmm. just very slowly tapering um, so that they're getting acclimated to it and not going from zero to 100 milligrams. But yep. remember in these studies, they have to show a large effect in a small amount of time. And a lot of times that comes at the expense of adverse effects. Yeah. For those in other countries, Mianserin is kind of a cousin of these two. Uh, even Mirtazapine is a little bit related, but not as closely um, as far as the serotonergic pathway, we'll talk about this later as well, but apomorphine is also a 5-HT2A antagonist. And then, uh, as we mentioned before, trazodone has a dose-dependent mechanism of action. So at lower doses, it will act more on adrenergic receptors. It works on alpha receptors. And then uh, at higher doses, the affinity for um, various serotonin receptors, whether it's an agonist or an antagonist, is going to increase. So 25 mg of trazodone is, has, com has quite different pharmacodynamics than 150 milligrams. Yeah, and I think the doses had to approach something like 300 milligrams as a cumulative daily dose to have antidepressant effects, which mm -hmm. it's a really crappy antidepressant because you're just going to be sleeping all the time. Yeah, it makes sense. You need so much serotonin that uh, you'll be tired when you take it. So it's almost like taking your um, uh, guanfacine. Mm. with taken in the uh, evening, yeah. something serotonergic. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's nice <laughs> to be able to separate that out. So of course, uh, it's used frequently off-label for insomnia. 